Every winter, thousands of wild swans flock into the UK and Ireland to escape the worst of the weather further north. These wild swans are of two different species, Hooper and Buicks. How can we separate them from our familiar resident mute swans and, somewhat more of a challenge, from each other? Mute swans are such obvious and familiar species that they need no introduction. The best way to identify the wild swans is by a combination of shape and behaviour and distribution, as well as more detailed features if seen closely enough. Wild swans, as their name suggests, tend to occur in wilder places and are extremely unlikely to be found in our towns and cities, taking bread with ducks on the local pond or river. Both hoopers and buicks are sleeker birds than mute swans, with shorter tails, and they do not hold their wings arched over their backs. They usually occur in groups, somewhat even great numbers, and are much more likely to be found feeding on land than in the water, except at some well-known sites. By far the commonest of the two northern swans is Hooper. Some 20 to 30,000 birds arrive from Iceland from October, with numbers dropping through March and April the following year. The birds generally avoid the south and southwest, but are widely distributed across much of the rest of the country, with very large numbers in certain areas, such as the fens of East Anglia. Scattered birds can be found almost anywhere, although usually in small family parties rather than singly. Some birds do stay through the year, especially injured ones. A partner will often stay with them, and so occasional breeding records do occur. Small numbers breed every year in Shetland and the Outer Hebrides, and these may well be from the expanding population in Iceland. Hoopers are very big birds, virtually the same size as mute swans, although they appear more sleek. The neck is very long, and the wedge-shaped head and beak shape is distinctive, even if the yellow and black bill colour is not obvious. The proportions of the head and neck are different to on a mute swan, with a narrower neck held straight up, with a kink at the chest, rather than the mute swan's more S-shaped curved neck. The smaller head forms a wedge shape with the long yellow and black bill. Of all the swan species, Hooper is the most likely to show yellowish iron staining on the head and neck as well. If seen close to, the bill will be immediately obviously different to mute swan's reddy orange bill. Hooper swans have a clean, bright yellow bill with a black tip. Much has been written about the differences in bill markings on Hooper and Buick swans, which share the same yellow and black colouring. One definitive way of telling them apart was always Hoopers have yellow bills with black tips, whereas Buicks have black bills with yellow bases. I personally have never found this at all helpful in the field, and indeed I feel this may only be of use in close views to confirm an identification arrived at by a combination of other clues. Buick swans are rarer birds. Only about 7,000 arrive from Arctic Russia to a few sites, mainly in southern and eastern England. Birds arrive in October and November, and most have left by the end of March. The largest concentrations are found in the East Anglian Fens, the Severn Estuary, and the species is scarce in Ireland outside of a couple of well-known sites, such as Wexford Slobs. The numbers wintering here have been decreasing everywhere, and this may be because birds are not needing to travel all the way west to UK and Ireland, as the winters have been milder on continental Europe, nearer their breeding grounds. This process is known as short-stopping. Although still a very big bird, Buick swans are significantly smaller than the other two species, although sadly this feature is often not useful in the field unless two species are seen together. In terms of behaviour, Buick's is most like Hooper swan, likely to be encountered in groups or family parties, often grazing on land and frequently seen performing trumpeting displays. Probably the best way to separate Buicks from Hooper is on proportions and shape of head. Compared to the Hooper, Buick's neck is somewhat shorter, although often still held straight up. The head is smaller and rounder, leading to the impression of a beak stuck onto the head, rather than both merging into a smooth wedge. The head shape and shorter neck together combine to give an overall more goose-like impression than the other two swans. If seen at close quarters, the bill is predominantly black, 
with yellow patches near the face, not extending forward as far as the nostrils. Youngsters of both the northern swans vary from young mute swans by their plain, smoky greyness, with virtually no contrast or patterning. From each other they are best told by the relative neck and head proportions, but they will inevitably be seen with their parents. The final clue to help separate the two wild swans is voice. Unlike mute swans, who, despite their name, are not mute, both Hooper and Buicks are highly vocal. Both frequently honk on the ground and in flight, but whereas Hooper swans have a clear, trumpeting, almost barking call, Buick swans have a much softer, squeaky, almost wheezy, yelping call. Even given all of these differences, it can be very difficult to identify birds, especially if they are seen out of context or are unheard. It's worth remembering that even mute swans can, on occasion, be found in surprisingly large numbers grazing on land. There will be times, particularly with distant birds, that even the clues of location and proportions won't enable you to confidently identify the birds.